Uh, sitting next to me is Senator Jeff Merkley. Senator, it's so great to have you with us, and, and thank you for, for showing up. I'm delighted to be with you. I'm really, you know, what, what is at the top of your list? I'm sorry we haven't had a chance to talk. I'm on your mailing list. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's because in the past I've contributed to your campaigns. Um, and it seems like every week you've got some cause that you're highlighting. You're doing a really great job of promoting these progressive causes. Well, the biggest thing I'm focused on is the corruption of our federal government, the gerrymandering, the voter suppression, the dark money, uh, the use of the minority veto in the Senate to uh, block basic legislation for working America. If we don't take on that corruption and we don't pass it for the People Act, we will lose on health care, housing, education, infrastructure, jobs, climate, chaos, and equality. We'll lose on it all if we don't fix the corruption in our nation. Tell me what the Poor For the People Act is. So the For the People Act takes on the three things of gerrymandering, voter suppression, and dark money, plus... Is this H.R. 1? It's H.R. 1. The Senate version is called For the People. Okay. Tom Udall of New Mexico and I are the, the leads on the Senate. We have every single Democrat signed up. Mitch McConnell proceeded to uh, call in his caucus and basically tell people they must not co-sponsor this effort to protect the Constitution of the United States of, um, of America. And why is that? Because his power comes from the corruption. Right. And so that just tells the whole story right there. It really, really does. Um, it's passed the House of Representatives. Yes, it has. H.R. 1. Um, and, and McConnell is blocking it in the Senate. There's no way around. There's no, there's no Senate equivalent of a, of a uh, oh, what's it called? Petition to withdraw. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, no, there, no, there isn't. Uh, in fact, the Senate District, was uh, intended to be very distributed power, uh, but the majority leader has used the tradition of the, uh, the first to speak after any, any gavel mm -hmm. uh, and the first to provide an amendment and then blockade all other amendments. To, to essentially take away power from 99 other senators. Uh, so we've got to change the way the Senate operates. Here's a question that should be posed to every single presidential candidate. The Republicans in the Senate change the rules in order to pass their agenda for the powerful by simple majority. Do we have the grit and the determination to change the rules to pass the for the people agenda by simple majority. And if we don't, you shouldn't be running for president. So you're, you're, what, basically what you're calling for is all the presidential candidates on the Democratic side to call for an end to the filibuster in the Senate. Yes, an end to the end of the filibuster. You can do it in a variety of, of, of ways. Uh, there's four or five different approaches. But the point is that when the Republicans wanted to distribute massive amounts of the federal treasury to the richest Americans, they took a loophole, which is a, was a simple majority loophole, to shrink the deficits, stood it on its head and said, we can use this to expand deficits, that is, tax reductions for the wealthy. They did it in 2001. Is that reconciliation? It was reconciliation. Yeah. So they, they flipped it on its head. They brought in uh, a parliamentarian to change the interpretation, uh, and they got their agenda done by simple majority. Meanwhile, the, the vision of America, the for the people vision, is completely hamstrung by the minority veto, which is another way of describing the filibuster. It's a minority veto. It actually was devastating the Continental Congress. And so the founders deliberately did not put a supermajority on passing legislative bills. Right. And in fact, uh, Hamilton in the Federalist Papers uh, rages about how destructive a minority veto is. Of course, uh, he calls it supermajority, speaking yeah. of supermajority. And uh, so we, we see that uh, it's so destructive, it's a deep freeze, uh, and it's enabling the powerful to completely uh, take over our government for themselves, expand income inequality, wealth inequality, and fail to address the foundations for work in America. That's, that's mind boggling. Um, what else is on your stack right now? Well, I'm really immersed in the battle on the border for children and for all refugees uh, here in the land of Lady Liberty, holding her torch to the tired, the poor, the huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Uh, we understand the plight of people fleeing persecution or famine or war and to treat refugees as criminals and to take children and blockade them at the border, leave them stranded in Mexico to put them in ice-cold holding cells, to deny toothpaste and diapers and nutrition and, and water, to leave lights on all night long, yeah. to put them into a for-profit prison system, homestead in, in Florida. Look at this headline. Outrageous. Headline, Trump administration stole at least 18 babies as young as four months from migrant families, House report says. This is unbelievable. If this was happening in another country, we'd be passing resolutions about 
hey, this horrific human rights abuses, America must stand up against it. It's happening with our government, with our money, on our territory, and no one can change it but us, all Americans, off the sidelines, get involved in this battle uh, to treat uh, people fleeing persecution with decency and respect. And shouldn't we also be doing something about uh, helping them mitigate the damage that climate change is doing in Guatemala and Honduras and oh. that, and that uh, you know, Reagan's uh, militaristic policies in all three of those countries? Yeah, absolutely. I went down to the Northern Triangle countries, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, uh, and there's uh, in the grip of uh, many challenges. Uh, some of those challenges directly related to Americans buying drugs. The money that flows there, the guns that flow there, resulting in street-level extortion. But as you appropriately note, uh, extended drought, climate chaos is uh, resulting in failed uh, corn crops right. and, and uh, starvation, and people are, are fleeing for their lives.